Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Here's your humorous filler for tonight. I don't get this. Never mind. I'll give you something else. No, explain it to me. I, I want to know. I want to understand. Explain it to me. Firemen are supposed to put out fires, but their building burned down. <laughs> Probably an accident. <laughs> oh, say, Lou. Lou, I'd like to talk to you about my blazer. What about your blazer? Well, don't you think it's about time I got a new one? Something in keeping with my personality? Oh, sure, Ted. How about a white canvas one with long sleeves that buckle behind your back? <laughs> See, if you want anything around here, all you have to do is ask for it. <laughs> Seems like a good day to stay out of Lou's way. Right. Mary? <laughs> yes, Mr. Grant. I called you in here because I wanted to apologize for snarling at Ted. Tell Ted I'm sorry. Well, why did you tell him? I'm not that sorry. <laughs> no, it's just that I'm in a lousy mood today. I was reading the paper this morning and saw something about a friend of mine in Detroit. Uh, it really made me mad. He was doing an article on some mobster, and somebody took a shot at him. Oh, gee, that's terrible. Yeah, why couldn't it have been me they shot at? Nobody ever shoots at me. <laughs> there was a time when I was out there for, digging for news, too. I was one heck of a reporter. I was really good. Made Time Magazine, under press. Detroit's Grant. A taste for booze, a nose for news. <laughs> What you do here is pretty important, too, you know. Yeah, all we do around here is just rip the news out of a wire service machine. In those days, I used to go out and get it for myself. <laughs> I bet you were some reporter, too. Mm. You want to see something? <laughs> you know what this is? Well, it looks like an old, dusty, broken-down typewriter. Yeah, but it's not just any old, dirty, broken-down, dusty typewriter. This is my grandfather's typewriter. Was he a newsman, too? No, a pharmacist. <laughs> he banged out a lot of pill labels on this baby. I banged out a lot of exclusives on it, too. I ever tell you about the time they threatened to kill me? Really? Mm. I was working in Chicago. I was doing a story on racketeers in the nightclub business. And these two gorillas came up to me, and they said, Grant, Drop the story, or tonight you'll be sleeping with the fishes. What'd you do? I dropped the story. I didn't want to sleep with no fishes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I printed the story. Boy, those were great days. I really felt I was doing something useful, something worthwhile. Now look at me. The only thing I got to do around here is pick up new blazers for Ted. Well, Mr. Green, if you miss reporting so much, why don't you do some? I mean, now that I'm producer of the news, you've got some spare time. Why don't you take advantage of it? I'm just like this old typewriter here. My keys stick. My ribbons all faded. My insides are clogged with gook. Oh, Mr. Grant, that's not true. A little oil, new ribbon, a couple of screws tighten, you both be good as new. Well, you'll be uncovering so much crime and corruption, your life won't be worth a plugged nickel. You really think so? just dozed off <laughs> while lying in bed. <laughs> um, gee, you know, we're sorry. It never occurred to us that you'd be asleep at 9.30. Yeah, well, no, usually I'm not. I haven't been to bed by 9.30 in years. I Usually I stay up, you know, during the week to 11, 11.30, most of the time. Gee, even on uh, school nights? <laughs> Maybe we ought to go, Lou. No, no, come on, stay. I'll fix some coffee. Mary? You won't believe what I've got in these folders. A guy over at Democratic Party headquarters gave me their files on campaign contributions in his whole area. Now, I'll bet you somewhere in here, there's dynamite. 
All you got to do is find it. Me? Yeah, I have to have them back there by midnight. Now, uh, why don't you and Charlene go through them? There's another lead I want to follow up. I got to meet this ex-con at a pool hall. Oh, Paul, Paul, why are you so excited? You know how long it's been since I met an ex-con at a pool hall? But listen, uh, what exactly are we supposed to be looking for? Just make a list of who gave what to whom, who got what from whom, and who did what for whom. But, Mr. Grant... Forget it, Mary. Just be thankful he doesn't want pictures of everybody getting it and doing it and giving it. Okay. Let's hear what everybody's got. Mary. Well, Mr. Grant, after two weeks, what I've gotten mostly is discouraged. Me too. I have never seen so many honest elections. Boy, it really makes you feel proud. <laughs> it's okay if I join you? This doesn't concern you, Ted. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe you two haven't come up with anything. But good old-fashioned legwork paid off. I think I found our man right here. Oh, I like him. He's perfect. Can I be the one to tell Teddy's fired? <laughs> Never mind the jokes. This is Charles Hartney, councilman from the 17th Ward and quite possibly the next candidate for governor. Why doesn't it concern me, Lou? Because <laughs> it's just for newsroom staff, Ted. Oh. <laughs> Now, I did a lot of research, and this guy strikes me as the kind of subject we're looking for. Oh. Well, I've never heard a word against Hartman. And he's got an honest face. Oh, I know that sounds dumb. I mean, you can't tell a crook by his face, but this guy looks like... Well, he's got the kind of face that people would look at and... What are you saying, Murray? I voted for him. <laughs> so did a lot of people. And I'll admit his record looks clean. But I've heard a couple of rumors. No, I'm newsroom staff, so this does concern me. Mind like a steel trap. <laughs> Are you guys planning a surprise party for me? Ted, will you please get out of here? Hey, I know that guy, Harkness, Hartley or something. He's a politician. Should we invite him to the party? <laughs> oh, no, you don't, Mary. You can't fool me. I don't know, Harkley. Ted, believe me, what we're doing here really doesn't concern you. Yes, it does concern me, Lou. I want to know what's going on or I tell. Tell who? Him. Tell him what? Why should I tell you? Uh, all right, all right. If you want to stay, stay. But this is top secret, so you be quiet. I don't even remember being here. I think he means it. What kind of rumors have you heard about Hartney? Well, at this point, it's just innuendo, but I've got a newsman's hunch. Something smells funny to me about his campaign, and we're going to root it out. Uh-huh. <laughs> we're going to dig deep. And the first thing that means is that we're subject to counterattack. We've got to be clean. So if any of us has anything in his background that could compromise our investigation, I want to know about it now. Not me. Murray. Well, uh, Lou, when I was in college, I belonged to this organization and uh, was arrested once during this demonstration. <laughs> A left-wing riot? No. A fraternity panty raid. <laughs> Raid. And all I got was a pair of sweat socks. Lou, I'm pretty clean. Unless you count swinging. I do. I'm clean. <laughs> So we go get the facts. A full-scale investigation. Now, that'll mean long hours, hard work. And I want to warn you, this is a rough game. It could mean threats, intimidation, maybe even physical violence. <clears throat> well, it's like you said, love. It doesn't concern me. It doesn't concern me. <laughs> I'm expecting a visitor, an important one. 
All right, I'll buzz you when he gets here. What's his name? <laughs> this kind of guy, you don't ask his name. He's what we call a source. <laughs> he provides information for money. If anyone's got the goods on Hartney, he does. You mean you're paying for information? It's a last resort, Mary. I'm starting to get a little discouraged. <laughs> In the past three weeks, I've checked out Hartney's income tax records, his campaign finance statements, his investments, and so far, I haven't found one thing to write about. The first day, I took out my old typewriter, and I spent a half hour cleaning the keys. They're still clean. <laughs> I have to keep my keys clean. Otherwise, the E's start looking like O's. And before you know it, Ted's announcing that the cops have arrested a pooping Tom. <laughs> I'm looking for Lou Grant. My name is... Uh, that, that's all right. I don't have to know. Hiya, Jack. Oh, good to see you, Lou. Look, I got the information you wanted. I added a one-page summary. Uh, everything in a nutshell. This is it, Mary, our million-dollar story. Oh, it's uh, 25 bucks, Lou. 25 bucks? That's all you want? Oh, I didn't do it for money, Lou. I did it for old time's sake. A and just enough money to cover the Xerox expenses. Oh, hey, thanks, Jack. That's terrific of you. That's terrific. 25 bucks. Yeah. Uh, 25. I'm a little short. Uh, eight. Mary? Yeah, I'll look. You take a check? Oh, yeah, you've been out of business a long time. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five. That makes 13. Ted, have you got 12 bucks? Yes. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Murray! What is it, Lou? Give me 12 bucks quick. What is this, the educational channel? <laughs> like I said, Jack, you're terrific. Mr. Grant, what? What is it? I killed myself investigating a politician. And who do I pick? A man who's totally honest. You want to hear the only black mark against this clown? Listen to this. In April 1965, he got a $2 parking ticket. His meter expired while he was delivering Easter baskets to an orphanage. <laughs> Mr. Grant? Barry, I'd better be alone now. Believe me, you've never seen me like this, and I don't think anyone should. going in there. Mary, don't. That's crazy. I know. Did you buzz me? I distinctly told you... Grant, I'm coming in anyway. And don't be concerned about my not having seen you like this before. What's so different about the way you're behaving? You want something different. Ah! <laughs> well, that that uh, certainly was new. <laughs> Do you think that you're going to be wanting to do that again? No. I feel better. Well, well I've heard that letting it out really helps some people relieve their tensions. I, I don't think I probably ever could because... Mary! Oh, my chatting fast is my way of screaming. Look, what, what is it you want from me? You want to give me a little pep talk, huh, Mary? A little well, pep talk? yes, I think I would like to do yes. Well, I don't think a pep talk's going to help. I'll keep it short. Good. Cheer up! <laughs> That's it? I really trimmed it down, Mr. Grant. <laughs> Look, I just don't understand what's so awful that's happened. I, I killed myself working three weeks on a documentary I can't do, and you ask me what's happened that's so awful? Why can't you do the documentary? Because he's an honest man! Well, what's so wrong about doing a documentary about an honest man? Ah, oh, Mary, oh, that's what? stupid. Mr. Grant, I don't think there's any reason to be calling names. Mary, you're a dope. <laughs> Calling isn't going to solve anything Look, here. Look, I told you not to come in here, didn't I? You can't do a show about an honest man. People don't want to see that sort of thing. Our job is to turn over flat rocks and show people the slimy things underneath. Oh, <laughs> oh, so slimy. Well, that's what life is. I think people would love to see a documentary with good news in it. Anyway, you've spent all that money filming, Hartney. You've already set aside an hour of airtime. Why not give it a try? No, Mary. The answer is no. Well, that's just stupid, Mr. Grant, and you're a dope. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, you talked me into it. Jen, I don't know why you're doing all this. None of this stuff seems all that dusty. Because I'm nervous. I can't just sit around waiting. What's to be nervous about? Lou's gonna come back from editing, and either he's gonna say, Mary, it's a good show, or Mary, you're fired. <laughs> yeah, right. Ah, uh, listen, I know it's easy for me to say, but what is the point of worrying, huh? I remember one time... Oh, you don't want to hear somebody else's dull story. Yeah, sure I do. Maybe it'll distract me. Go. Oh. Well, the point is, I was worried about a show once, too. I was playing Vegas and dating a lot. A friend of mine had fixed me up with Sinatra the night before, and I was dog-tired. My arrangements hadn't arrived, and I... Frank Sinatra? Yeah, and we'd been out late. My arrangements hadn't arrived, and... You went out with Frank Sinatra? Yeah, yeah, we'd been out late the night before. My arrangements hadn't arrived, You and... went out with Frank Sinatra? <laughs> yeah, he was playing there, too. Anyway, my arrangements hadn't arrived, and so I had no chance to oh, rehearse. Oh, I... blue eyes? Yeah. <laughs> what was he like? Nice, nice guy. So anyway, my arrangements didn't arrive. I got three hours before Did you show date him more than once? I don't remember. Anyway, there I was. The show's about to open. It's a sellout crowd. I have no arrangements, no rehearsal, and my conductor is fogged in in an airport in you San Francisco. You don't remember whether or not you dated Frank Sinatra more than once? I don't know. It must have been 10 years ago. Well, the point is, my worrying turned out to be for nothing. Hi. I think we can relax. <laughs> it looks good. What? <laughs> the show. Oh, oh, Mr. Grant, that's wonderful. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you gonna watch it with us tomorrow night? Yeah, I'd love to, but I gotta work. Oh, listen, there's a TV behind the bar. Why don't you both come and watch it with me? That's fine with me, Mary. Yeah, sure. Oh, great. We'll bring the whole gang. Come on, I'll double park. Okay, terrific. See you there. Oh, and Mary, about Sinatra. Yeah. You know how some guys sort of get jealous about that sort of thing? Yeah. yeah. So please, don't say anything to Robert Redford. This is Murray Slaughter. Murray. Murray Hi. wrote tonight's show. Oh, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. No, it's no big deal. Nothing special. I mean, uh, don't plan on being entertained or amused or thrilled or anything. Murray. It's all right, Mary. I wish somebody had told me that about my second husband. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just wrote it. Uh, actually, it was Mary's idea. She co-produced it. Well, thank you. I just hope it works. I mean, I just hope people will be interested in seeing a normal, decent human being in a documentary. Although I don't know why not. I mean, that's what most people are. <laughs> I can see she's never been chased by the trombone section in a band bus. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. Charlene, I'd like you to meet Ted Baxter. Hi, Ted. I've heard a lot about you. You're, uh, legendary. <laughs> you chicks have some grapevine. <laughs> hey, it's, uh, almost time to show. Tony, will you turn on to Channel 12? Sure. Uh, listen, everybody, normally I play a set right now, but these are my friends, and they've done a television documentary, and we'd like to watch it. Of course, if any of you would like to watch it, too, your... Drinks are on me. <laughs> Want another drink, Mary? Oh, uh, no, this one's fine. I'm, uh, dedicating this show to you. <laughs> Good evening, this is Ted Baxter. Tonight we're going to examine the career of Councilman Charles Harkney. Right after this commercial message. Gus Stern, that guy's good. This is a nightmare, Ted and Stereo. What's on the tube? It's a documentary. Portrait of a politician. I'll uh, tell you what you missed. <clears throat> good evening, this is Ted Baxter. Tonight we're going to examine the career of Councilman Harkin. And then they showed a picture of some guy taking a nap on a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> For the next 60 minutes, our cameras are going to tag along with the councilman and record everything he says and does. We'll watch him make his breakfast. We'll go with him as he drives to work. We'll watch him open his morning mail. 
And that's a day in the life of Councilman Hartney. This is Ted Baxter saying good night and good news. I hope you're satisfied. We had a fire here once and more people stayed. <laughs> Mary, I don't believe it. You've done the impossible. You've made Ted Baxter look dull. <laughs> well, I'm leaving. Uh, the check taken care of, Lou? No, it isn't, Ted. That's okay, no rush. <laughs> well, I thought it was terrific. I thought it was just terrific. In fact, I think it was more than terrific. I think it was terrific, and I am sure that everybody really loved that show. <laughs> really. <laughs> There were 20 people here. Not one of them stayed. A drunk at the bar watched for two minutes and then went home to his wife. Yeah, and he's been divorced for 15 years. So now I gotta go back to work. Will you just listen? Just because people left doesn't mean that they didn't really love that show. It just means that they had other places to go. <laughs> What about the ones who didn't finish their drinks? Not thirsty. <laughs> Murray left after the first commercial. Well, Mr. Grant, I have my theory that everybody loved the show, and apparently you have another theory. <laughs> what is uh, your theory? <laughs> my theory is that if we showed this documentary by satellite to the world, mm -hmm. this would no longer be a crowded planet. Well, let me just say this to you then. I know you're right. Nobody wants to watch the good things that happen in a documentary. They only want to watch the rotten things. Do you know what that means, Mr. Grant? That if it weren't for the rotten things that happen in this world, we couldn't put on the news show. We should be grateful to all the people who do those rotten things. <laughs> we should stop them in the streets and say, thank you, Mr. Mugger. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Thief. Thank you, Mr. Maniac. <laughs> Mr. Grant, <laughs> if it weren't for those people, you and I would be out of jobs. It's a lousy business we're in, Mr. Grant. I quit. <laughs> Mary, it's don't a lousy be silly. business, Mr. Grant, and it's a lousy world. And I am going to Africa to work with Schweitzer. <laughs> Schweitzer is dead. Do you see what I mean? This lousy, lousy world. Sit down. It wasn't such a bad idea you had. People probably do want to watch good news. You want to know what the trouble with tonight was? I'll tell you what the trouble was. We put on a bad show. You and I pooled our talents to produce the worst documentary in the history of television. We did a really lousy job. Mr. Grant? What? Are you sure you're not just saying that to cheer me up? 